everybody. How's everybody doing today? I hope you're having a great day. Um, it's cloudy today, so I'm getting as much light in here as I can. I think we're going to have a big old storm later and stuff, and I don't want to. <laughs> I'm tired of rain and storms and stuff, but we got to do what we got to do, I guess. So, <laughs> anyway, I was going to do my scripture writing for today. Um, I was going to um, read aloud the scripture that is for the writing today. And then um, we'll talk about it a little bit. Uh, the topic has been on jealousy. So uh, we've seen a lot of different ways that people have uh, dealt with their jealousy and stuff. So we'll dive into that here in just a second. But for those of you who have not been here before, my name is Cherie. And I have a little Tibetan Spaniel that always gets on the stand that holds my camera. So if you see it wobbling as you did just then, that would be Mr. Gizmo's fault. Yes, he is uh, something else. And I see that he's getting a squeaky toy because he does that too. As soon as I get on here, he has to get something that makes noise. But I will put him out on the front porch if he does that. <laughs> so I apologize in advance because it's probably going to happen. <laughs> see? He got the pig. <laughs> I knew it was going to happen. It never fails. <laughs> but anyway, my name is Cherie and I welcome you to this channel. This is a faith-based channel. Uh, we do some cook with me's uh everything about God through the Bible, what's in my handbag, and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, if you're into all that, then I hope you stay with us and join us and subscribe. And if you like dogs that, you know, are annoying at times, then this is your channel too. What have you got? Let me see it. Let me see it. Let me see it. Let me see your pig. No. This is what you're hearing. <laughs> he played with this the other day and somebody on my video went before I picked Gizmo I said, let me show you what you're hearing and they thought I was going to pick up a pig <laughs> you want this? you want this? go get it okay, hang on just a second and I'll get you some quiet on here just a minute this is the culprit of the pig right here, guilty, are you guilty? did you get that pig? was that you? Did you get the squeaky pig? Oh, Gizmo. Mm-hmm. You are guilty. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> okay. Now, Gizmo and the pig are on the front porch <laughs> with Ringo, my cat, who finally decided to come home again. <laughs> Alrighty. So, back to what we're doing. <laughs> we're doing a study on jealousy. And uh, today we are studying Mark chapter 15 verses 8 through 13 and if you have your Bible or if you want to pause and go get your Bible feel free to do that uh, Mark chapter chapter 15 verses 8 through 15 is that right? I say it right yeah no 8 through 13 Mark 15, 8 through 13. I've had the awfulest time with my memory this morning. I have forgotten everything over and over again. I'll get up to go get something, sit down, forget it. Get up to go get it, come sit down, forget it. I mean, it's over and over and over again. Um, what's that say? Is that something on there? Okay. Uh, anyway, here we go. Hang on. I forgot these this morning, too. Like, I never found them. Okay. Verse 8 in Mark 15. The crowd went to Pilate and asked him to release a prisoner as usual. Would you like me to release to you the king of the Jews, Pilate asked, for he realized by now that the leading priest had arrested Jesus out of envy. But at this point, the leading priest started up the crowd to de demand the release of Barabbas uh, instead of Jesus. And Pilate asked them, then, why should I, then, wh then what should I do with this man you call the king of the Jews? And they shouted back, Crucify him! Why? Pilate demanded. What crime has he committed? But the mob roared even louder, Crucify him! So to pacify the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He ordered Jesus flogged with a lead-tipped whip, then turned him over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. And, uh, we see on here that jealousy, uh, they were jealous of Jesus. Uh, Jesus had all these followers and stuff, and they didn't like that. So they were very, very jealous of him. 
So, uh, let's read. Uh, I'm going to read. I'm in the Life Application Bible, and if you happen to have one of those Bibles, your notes probably say the same thing that mine does. But we'll see. Let's see. Uh, let's take this, uh, break this down just a little bit. In verse 8, the crowd went to Pilate and asked him to release a prisoner as usual. And down here in the notes, it says, This crowd was most likely a group of people loyal to the Jewish leaders. But where were the disciples and the crowds who earlier, who days earlier had shouted, Praise God in the highest heaven? That's in chapter 11 of Mark, verse 10. Jesus' sympathizers were afraid of the Jewish leaders. So they went into hiding. Another possibility is that the multitude included many people who were in the Palm Sunday parade, but who turned against Jesus when they saw that he was not going to be an earthly conqueror and their deliverer from Rome. Boy, can't friends like that, huh? Okay, then we're going to skip down to verse 10. Here's a footnote. Um. In verse 9, it said, Would you like me to release you to you, the king of the Jews? That was Pilate asking. And it said, For he realized by now that the leading priest had arrested Jesus out of envy. Now, the Jewish leaders hated Pilate, but they went to him for the favor of condemning Jesus to the crucifixion. Pilate could see that this was a frame-up. Why else would these people who hated him and the Roman Empire he represented asked him to convict one of their fellow Jews of treason and give him the death penalty. And they were wanting him crucified. Crucify him, crucify him, they would shout back in verse 13. Crucifixion was the Roman penalty for rebellion. Only slaves or those who were not Roman citizens would, could be crucified. If Jesus died by crucifixion, he would die the death of a rebel and slave not of the king he claimed to be. This is just what the Jewish religious leaders wanted and the reason they whipped the mob into a frenzy. In addition, crucifixion would put the responsibility for killing Jesus on the Romans. So there you go. Pass the buck, huh? Okay, then in 15, it says, So to pacify the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He ordered Jesus flogged with a lead-tipped whip, oh gosh, then turned him over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. Now the region of Judea where Pilate ruled as governor was um, little more than a hot and dusty outpost of the Roman Empire. And because Judea was so far from Rome, Pilate was given just a small army and his primary job was to keep the peace. Now, we know from historical records that Pilate had already been warned about other uprisings in this region, and although he may have seen no guilt in Jesus and no reason to condemn him to death, Pilate wavered when the Jews in the crowd threatened to report him to Caesar, and you can read about that in John 19.12. Such a report accompanied by a riot could cost him his position and hopes for advancement. <laughs> Political. Imagine that. <laughs> Although Jesus was an innocent according to Roman law, Pilate caved in to political pressure. He abandoned what he knew was right, trying to second-guess the Jewish leaders. Pilate gave a decision that would please everyone while keeping himself safe. When we ignore God's clear statements of right and wrong and make decisions based on the preferences of our audience, we fall into compromise and lawlessness. God promises to honor those who do right, not those who make everyone happy. And there you go. In a nutshell, there you go. You cannot live as a Christian and try to obey the book. Try to obey this Bible, okay? You cannot live by this book and also please uh, human nature and human beings. You just can't do it. Uh, there are other Christians out there, yes, that would probably not ask you to do the wrong thing. They shouldn't if they're a Christian. They should live biblically. But, uh, you know, if you start pleasing the world instead of pleasing God, then you're falling into a really, really slippery slope, a dangerous path, and uh, <laughs> you're headed for disaster. I'm not saying that we all make the right decisions all the time. We are of human flesh. But 
um, that light's glaring on my eyes. I'm sorry if I'm squinting. Um, but you have got to realize that you have got to follow what the Bible says. Now, those of you that are having it hard right now, that are having tough times, and you just don't know <laughs> what to do, why it's happening, you're kind of lost. You have got to know that God loves you. And that he wants what's best for you. And there may be people out there telling you, do this, do that. As the human flesh would tell you. But as the Bible says what to do and how to act and react, it might be totally different. So, follow this book. This is, this is our guide. This is our workbook, our human life guide. This right here is what we go by every day. It should be... Our manual, our manual, our handbook is right here. If you want to know it, if you want to know what to do, it's in this book. Go to the back to your concordance and look up words that pertain to whatever you're going through. Uh, you can get on an app on your phone and uh, even Google Bible verses pertaining to whatever, addiction, whatever. And read those verses and study and study and look online for uh, uh, sermons on subjects like that. And read the Bible and decide for yourself what it says. You don't have to go by what I say for sure because I'm no Bible scholar. I'm reading this along with everybody else. And please don't, don't think I'm all that in a bag of chips because I am not. I'm just a regular gal. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm just trying to do what I think is right. I pray and pray and pray that I do not mislead anybody on here uh, because I do not know the Bible inside and out. I have never read the Bible all the way through. I've tried and I give up and I don't do it. I'm doing it again. We'll see how far I go. But even if I do just a little bit at a time, whether I make it in a year or not, I'm just doing a little bit at a time. I'm not putting the pressure of read the Bible in a year. Because you know what I'm going to do? This is how I work. I'm reading that Bible. Zzz, I'm reading as fast as I can go. I ain't getting nothing out of it. But hey, I finished 10 chapters. You know, That's not the idea of reading the Bible in a year. Or reading the Bible all the way through. You have got to take your time and get what you can out of it. Now some of this is hard to understand. I'm with you on that. Some of this I don't get. I use my study helps in my study Bibles and stuff, but it is hard to understand. But I keep going because I sometimes will go back to those verses, maybe in someone's sermon or something as they're preaching on something, and then I get it. It's like, oh, okay, now I get it. But I'm not going to make a big deal out of it. I'm just not. Um, I think they're picking our garbage up. That's our driveway alarm. I'm sorry. Um uh, I can't do nothing with the garbage men, <laughs> the sanitation workers, because I put Gizmo on the porch, but I can't do nothing about them guys. <laughs> I need them real bad. <laughs> they take care of my messes around here. <laughs> Love their hearts. We always buy them something at Christmas and stuff, because those guys work hard. But you have got to keep on track of this Bible. I do not know it all. And there, like I said, there's parts that you're not going to get. But just keep on going. Don't knock yourself, beat yourself up over stuff that you don't understand right now. Just keep on reading. And as you're reading, it might give you a footnote to go back to read, I don't know, Job 4.1. I have no idea. I just named one. <laughs> you know, uh, and then when you are reading something else in the Bible and it says, oh, you know, the same as what was in Job 4.1, for instance. And you go back and read it and you're like, oh, so that's why that was happening because it led to this. So don't don't sweat it. If you're not understanding it, keep moving on. Keep moving on. It'll click with you. If you're getting frustrated, stop. Come back another time. You do not have to do it right now. Do it some other time. But, um, you know, don't let the Bible... Uh, don't let not understanding everything in this keep you from reading it. Um, because it is understandable, most of it. And all of it is when you finally... It, cl it clicks with you. But sometimes it takes a while for that to happen. So uh, just please don't give up and keep in your Bible and read. And if you get discouraged, read parts that you know you do understand and get back on track. You can't read it enough. I mean, there's you just could read the same thing over and over, and that would be great. So anyway, uh, that's what I wanted to do with you today. I'm not going to have you sit here with me as I write through all these scriptures. I read them out loud. Um, 
but I just wanted you to know that uh, you're not alone, and if you are having problems, just go to the Lord with it. Get you a friend or someone that is a Christian. Uh, there's churches you can call and helplines that you can call to help you through that. So just please uh, don't get discouraged. There's all of us out here that can try to help you. I know I have people on Messenger messaging me, you know, about their problems and stuff, and that's just precious as it can be, and I'm very touched. But just know that I am not perfect, and I don't know all the answers, and I'll tell you that up front. You know, I don't want to mislead anybody, but I will do my best to try to point you in the right direction of help in the Bible and stuff. And I'm a good listener, but, you know, that's fine. But you need to find your own people there, that like in a church that you can go to and get involved in. And uh, that will help you out a lot, just having somebody there that understands a women's group, something. But um, I just want you all to know that I really care about you all. And I hope you have a great day. And remember to live, love, laugh, and laugh some more because laughter is the best medicine. And I hope to see you back here real soon. Now, I'm going to have some busy, busy days ahead of me, so don't get discouraged with me. If I'm not on here a lot, I'm going to do the best I can. But we've had appointments and blah, 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 blah. You know, and then Oscar goes in for surgery. So that's going to be a little bit of a, you know, to get used to. A, a bit of a change of routine and stuff. So I'm going to have to take care of that a lot. So um, anyway, we'll see how it goes and how fast he heals. But we'll have physical therapy and all kinds of stuff to go to. So just bear with me. Uh, you can always watch my other videos and stuff. And I, and I just appreciate you all so much. And if this is something you like, please subscribe. Uh, leave us some comments down below so we know you're out there and you're listening. And um, I like you all so much. I love you to pieces. Just uh, hang in there and don't give up. And don't give up on God. He's there for you all the time. He's with us 24-7. You have a great day. And God bless. Bye-bye.